there's a reminder for Margaret. Good evening, everyone. My name is Judy. Um, welcome to the Ar to the OK Cycle and Adventure Tours Ireland webinar. Um, if you're not on mute, can you check and make sure you are on mute, um, just so that we don't have people talking over each other? Uh, this will probably take a little under an hour. Uh, we have uh, Jocelyn Black with us from Irish Tourism, who's going to tell us everything we ever need to know. Um, I'm going to start with a really short introduction, and then we're going to pass things along to her. So welcome, thanks for joining us. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, um, please type them into the chat. Uh, anything, we'll try and answer things tonight. If we have questions we can't answer tonight, we'll follow up with an email and give you an answer. So just type any questions into the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. Okay, Cycling Adventure Tours is a full service Tico licensed travel agency and we specialize in active vacations. Anywhere in the world that you want to go, we can take you there. Well, almost anywhere. Uh, we do bicycle tours. We do boat bike tours where your hotel comes with you. We do trekking and hiking tours. We do adventure tours. Um, and I'm going to give you a really brief introduction to the OK Cycles Tour team. Uh, Manny is with us tonight. He's the founder and CEO of uh, OK Cycling Adventure Tours. And over the last 25 years, oh, right. he has developed a worldwide network of partnerships and friendships with other tour operators. Um, Manny has cycled all over the world and he's actually spent a lot of time cycling in Europe. I'm Judy, I'm the office manager. I'm also a licensed travel advisor. Um, I'm Australian. Hi. I'm Australian and English by birth and Canadian by choice. Um, I've lived in several countries. I lived in Germany um, and I really enjoy traveling. Um, I've spent a lot of time recently traveling in Asia. This is Ross Travel. He's the third travel agent in our group. Um, Ross specializes in European tours um, and he enjoys Western European adventure travel. This is Howard. Howard looks after all of our billing um, he makes sure we stay out of trouble and if we get a bill, it'll be from Howard. So now I'd like to introduce you to tonight's speaker. Um, Jocelyn is from Tourism Ireland and she's going to take it away from here. Thanks so much, Judy. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Jocelyn. Uh, I am the Senior Publicity and Communications Executive with Tourism Ireland. Um, I've been there for about six years. And although I am giving you sort of the basic destination update as we're at right now with regards to OK Cycle Tours, please feel free to ask me any other questions. I've been to Ireland about 20 times in the past, well, four and a half years before the pandemic. So, um, and I'm also an avid traveler myself. Okay, so Ireland's back and we're asking everyone to press the green button. So what is that? The green button campaign is our new promotional blitz targeting uh, travelers for the uh, for holidays to the island of Ireland. Um, this campaign is essentially, you know, it's, it's inspiring people to, to drive back. So it's kind of fun. We have this button, green being synonymous with go, as well as synonymous uh, with the island of Ireland. Um, so iconic attractions that you might want to press the green button for um, and spectacular scenery include Dublin's Trinity College, uh, the Guinness Storehouse, but, uh, Titanic Belfast, um, and stunning sites like the Giant's Causeway and County Antrim, the Cliffs of Moher and County Clare, um, and all driving back to Ireland.com where you can find trip ideas um, and special offers there. So that is our new campaign. We are back out in market and inspiring everyone to travel to the island of Ireland. Um, sorry, I should have probably moved that as I was saying this, but these are some of the creatives that you may be seeing being served up to you on, um, you know, online, on television, if you're in the US, um, and social media. So why Ireland? Uh, well, Condé Nast has given us a couple of awards. Galway has won the ninth best small city in the world. Um, Ashford Castle was awarded the seventh top resort in Europe. 
uh, and Ireland, the 14th top country in the world. There are often um, uh, Lonely Planet um, awards as well, and Ireland always tops the list. In addition, Time Out magazine just named Dublin as one of the world's coolest neighborhoods. Um, and I do have a link that I could share with everyone if you'd like. But for one of those reasons, it would be the stunning uh, scenery, uh, the history, Dublin Castle, Trinity College, Guinness Storehouse, the River Liffey, um, just to name a few. Um, so navigating travel to Ireland post pandemic. Um, I will go through sort of the air access here and the COVID requirements because I know that's what everyone wants to know. Can they travel to Ireland and how do they need to be able to do it? Um, so Ireland maintained a pretty high um, vaccination rate with the second in Europe. 92% of adults have been fully vaccinated in Ireland and Northern Ireland has been ranked six with 80% of people um, age 16 plus who are fully vaccinated. Um, <laughs> there are Irish pubs all over the world in Ireland are in big trouble. So, you know, part of the Irish culture would be, you know, going down to Temple Bar, for instance, in Dublin and, and having a pint and visiting with the locals. You can do that in smaller towns. You can do that in the bigger cities. You can do that all over. And that's part of the magic, the warm Irish welcome uh, and the friendly locals regaling you with tales and myths and legends, right? So if you're looking to go somewhere, Ireland uh, definitely has the highest vaccination rate, one of the highest vaccination rates in Europe. Uh, and we do have direct air access. So with Air Canada, Air Canada has direct flight from Toronto to Dublin three times a week. Air Lingus has direct air access from Toronto to Dublin um, four times a week, which is great news. And then coming in 2022, just launched, um, WestJet has a new route to Toronto to Dublin. Uh, so that will be seasonal, flying from May to October in 2022. And there's also gateways from Calgary and Halifax. Um, and Air Transat also has a seasonal route, uh, Toronto to Dublin, April to August, 2022. So COVID requirements uh, for traveling to the Republic and to Northern Ireland. Um, so uh, to the Republic of Ireland, vaccinated travelers will need to fill out a passenger locator form um, and there will be no travel related testing or quarantine required. What vaccinated travelers means, and given that a lot of this audience is in Canada, um, Ireland is not currently recognizing mixed, uh, mixed, whoops, mixed doses, sorry, excuse me, um, as fully vaccinated. It, so they, we can't have one Moderna and one Pfizer. It has to be two shots of a single brand. So two Pfizer, two AstraZeneca, to Moderna at this time. Uh, however, if you were to get a third or a booster and that kind of thing, that was the same as one of your other shots, then you would be, that would be considered fully vaccinated. We do hope that's going to change soon. It should be changing soon. The situation is always very fluid. Um, so currently, that's the way it is. Uh, but again, we would suggest staying in touch with us, uh, staying up to date with Ireland's Department of Health and the Irish uh, government website. Um, so non-vaccinated travelers would have to fill out a passenger locator form. It would require a negative PCR test, uh, result within 72 hours prior to travel, self-quarantining. Um, and then on the day, on the fifth date, uh, another testing would be required. And if you are negative, then you're free to go about uh, your journey. The self-quarantining um, is similar as it is here. You would have to go and stay wherever your destination was or in a hotel. Um, and that would be at, at your expense, at the traveler's expense. And then traveling with children ages 12 to 17 will be required to have a negative PCR test result within 72 hours prior to arrival. Oh. Uh, Self-quarantining requirements are required based- it's April till August. That is, did, was there a question about the April to August? Um, is that for WestJet or? Okay. Um, for Northern Ireland, vaccinated travelers will need, to, will need to fill out the passenger locator form. Uh, there is no self-isolation required. And then on day two, a PCR test is required. Non-vaccinated vaccinated travelers 
will again have to fill out a passenger locator form uh, for the UK specifically. Um, the negative PCR test taken within 72 hours and then self quarantining for 10 days um, and then book a post arrival testing should already be in place. And then again with uh, traveling with children. Um, ages 11 and older will be required to have a negative PCR test within 72 hours of arrival and the self-quarantining uh, requirements based on accompanying adult uh, vaccination status. Um, and then all of that information we, um, we can always share with you, just reach out at any time. This would be a, you know, a reminder, we are doing um, an immersive Ireland event, so you can always set your calendars to join us next week. Uh, it's a live virtual event that will help you truly uncover some unique experiences on the island of Ireland um, in addition to this webinar. So I will put you a video for the Green Button campaign right now. Let me know if you can hear the sound. Yes? Can you hear it? I no, can't. I can't hear it. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, let me um, stop share and I'll share again just to make sure that I turned the sound on. There we go. Okay. Oops. There we go. Sorry about that. Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. So that gives you a little flavor of our campaign there. I'm not sure if that made you want to get up and press the green button right now. The beautiful cliffs of Moher right there with the authentic Irish music. Oh, sorry, there we go. So in addition, uh, if you follow along on social media and you follow along on Instagram, we do have a, an influencer campaign going on. So this will help you experience Ireland in real time. Um, we have top tier travel influencers going over, starting with pressing the green button, what the airport experience is like, what the flight experience is like, and then once they get there and the destinations are at. So you can see in real time what your experience could be. Um, so crowds or you know the dining experiences and the attractions and the weather and everything else that you would wanna know. Uh, so just follow along with the Green Button campaign on our social media. But again, this is a reminder here. Uh, and we are also on our Facebook page. You can also find packages and deals for various tours. There we go. Okay, so why visit Ireland now? Ireland is the closest European gateway uh, with only a very short six hour flight, um, flight time and typically overnight. So you can get a good rest and then wake up in beautiful Ireland. Um, there's tons of outdoor adventure. There's paddle boarding, there's cycle tours, which we'll get to. There's sea kayaking, um, there's coast steering, there's surfing, there's walking tours and hiking. Um, all kinds of beautiful outdoor and soft adventure, right? The views and the landscapes. We all know the stunning uh, bucket list destination of Cliffs of Moher or the Sleeve League uh, cliffs up in Donegal. Um, so that's sunset chasing on the West Coast or the colorful cottages of Galway. Um, the old school sort of farming practices that, that are out on the Aran Islands with the, you know, the gray stone against the ocean backdrop. Um, iconic attractions like Epic Island, where people can, um, you know, explore their their heritage. Titanic Belfast is built right on the site where the original Titanic was built. The experience is, you know, it's a couple of hours long. It's completely immersive. It's a really powerful experience. Um, there's Trinity College, as I mentioned before, where you can walk in the long haul, uh, where some of the greatest minds. Um, you know, have, have published their works and, and have sat and thought uh, or written and written works. Um, and then heritage and ancestry. So, you know, 4.5 million Canadians uh, claim Irish heritage, including four Canadian prime ministers. 
Um, there's also, I'm not sure if you know this, but there is the only Gale Talk region outside of Ireland is actually in Ontario. It's in Tamworth, Ontario. Um, so it's an Irish speaking region in Canada. Um, and then of course there's Epic, as I mentioned, where you can go and explore your, your heritage, or, you know, if you go to various hotels, they have ancestry butlers. Um, it's pretty exciting. I did my own sort of ancestry and heritage on ancestry.ca and did a little exploring over there as well as over here. And it's pretty, it's pretty interesting and mind blowing to sort of put the pieces of, of your ancestry together. You know, there's over 5,000 years of ancient history. Um, Newgrange uh, is a passage tomb and also a place where on the winter solstice on December 21st, um, the light lines up directly with a hole in this passage tomb, this ancient passage tomb that is 5,000 years older than the pyramids at Giza. Um, and then of course, there's a ton of other immersive experiences. So our focus for 2022 right now is, you know, reconnecting, reconnecting with family and friends, reconnecting um, it, with people we haven't been able to see in the, since the pandemic started. As mentioned, also soft adventure. So this is an image of paddle boarding up in Derry, London Derry, um, you know, getting outside, getting back to nature, being well and healthy, um, and then festivals and events. So. Tradfest is a festival every January where it celebrates all kinds of traditional music all around the city of Dublin. Um, it's one of the more popular festivals and if you really want to get immersive into the culture of Dublin, uh, this would be a great one to hit. Of course, everyone knows St. Patrick's Day, uh, March 17th, the biggest holiday, non-holiday around the world. Um, and then Halloween, so the timing of this webinar is great. So. I'm not sure if anyone knew, but Halloween was actually invented or, or originated uh, in Ireland, but it wasn't known as Halloween back then. It was known as the Festival of Samhain, which if you see it printed, it's spelled Samhain, but it's pronounced Samhain. Uh, so that's a little fun fact for you if you're ever trying to catch somebody on their Gaelic. Um, Dairy London Dairy. Uh, was named the world's best destination for Halloween uh, by USA Today with the legendary Halloween festival. And now there's, uh, and that's in Northern Ireland. And now there is a secondary festival called the Puka Festival uh, in County Meath, which is just north of Dublin and Ireland's ancient east, um, celebrating sort of the myths and legends and interesting characters. Um, Samhain was the end of season, the end of summer festival, um, harvest festival and transitioning from, you know, summer and fall into the winter. And that's how that began. They used to carve turnips instead of pumpkins. That's how the jack o lantern came about. Um, and then they would wear masks, which we know is trick-or-treating and dressing up. They would wear masks to ward off um, unwanted, unwanted spirits. So the Halloween story, if you're paying attention all next week, you will see some across broadcast and print and online, no doubt. Um, again, things to do. Um, so there's the Hidden Hoth experiences in Dublin, the Peatland Biodiversity Trail in Kildare. There's seaweed foraging, which is very interesting and very cool, uh, in Waterford. And away we walk the clifftop experience in Northern Ireland. That's just some of the um, things we can do. You know, the first one is less than an hour from the city, exploring beautiful coastal fishing villages and ports. Um, you know, you can hear tales about Vikings. There's a ton of Viking history in Ireland, Dublin being one of the Viking cities, the first one being uh, Waterford, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, exploring the biodiversity. In the Burren, you know, there's there's fossils of foliage and creatures that you would typically only see at the equator. And that's just for back from when the earth, uh, you know, was Pangea and then it all expanded out. It's actually very, very interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting island for such a small island. There's a ton of history there. So island cycleways, why we're all here. Oops, sorry, excuse me. Um, so Ireland's greenways and trails are a great way to see some of the most beautiful and unspoiled parts of the country while enjoying the great outdoors. Um, a greenway is predominantly a traffic-free path designated for use by pedestrians. 
cyclists and other non-motorized users, such as um, wheelchair users, families with buggies, et cetera. Uh, and then for cyclists, greenways are designed specifically to meet the needs of cyclists in terms of gradient and surface um, and, the, and wide enough to accommodate shared usage. Um, again, in particular, ideal for cyclists with limited experiences and children, very smooth, very beautiful along the coastal, uh, coastal routes um, and some of the old unused or no longer used uh, railways. Um, some of the great routes um, are the Wild Atlantic Way cycle route on the west coast of Ireland, um, which is 2,500 kilometers, uh, the ring of the whole thing, the ring of Kerry, uh, the Skellig Ring, Valencia uh, cycle loop in Killarney uh, in County Kerry, which is 180 kilometers, um, the Kingfisher Trail cycle loops in County Leitrim and Fermanagh. Um, which is 480 kilometers, Inish Own 100 cycle loop in County Donegal, which is 160 kilometers, um, and the Burn cycle loop in County Clare, 150 kilometers. And to top that off, you can stay in some very cool accommodation while you're cycling around the island of Ireland. Uh, you can fall asleep um, under the stars, as you see here in one of these bubble domes. This is up in uh, Finlock in County Fermanagh. Um, you can fall asleep in a converted shepherd's hut looking out at the Black Stairs Mountains. Um, a luxury hideaway with, you know, with forest domes. Um, you can stay in castle hotels, you can stay in lighthouses. Um, and then part of the burn, if you're interested in ecotourism, part of the burn ecotourism network, Greggins um, is a castle hotel and is a model of environmentally conscious friendliness. Um, and then that's about it that we have for you today. We would like you to press the green button. We want to inspire you to come to the island of Ireland, especially through cycle tours uh, with OK Cycle. Um, and if you have any questions, we are always here. And if you want to do some exploring, just go to ireland.com. There we go. Any questions? Yes, please. Can you can you spell out what you mean by immersive experiences? Um, what do you mean? Sorry, what do you mean? Immersive experiences. What do I mean by immersive experiences? Yes. Can you give us some example? I mean, you listed off a bunch of things, but I don't really know what one can do there. You don't know, like in terms of the seaweed foraging or anything like that. No, no. Just give me an example and and define it. Like, how do you visit? Do you visit and participate? Do you visit, participate, and stay? Um, just tell me more about what you yeah. mean. I mean, if you say you wanted to take a cycle tour out, um, you know, along the Wild Atlantic Way, um, you know, you would be on the cycling tour, but then you could also have immersive, like where you're seaweed foraging um, as a stop, and then you're staying, you know, in a bubble dome under the stars, out in nature, or in a lighthouse. Um, you know, you're you're eating and, and maybe having a pint with the locals um, and learning about the history. You're seeing the history. There's castles dotted around the island. Um, you know, there's there's history in absolutely everything. Um, so that's what I mean by immersive. If that sort of makes sense. Do you have a like a specific question to one of the experiences or an area, or can I help? Um. Uh, no, I, you you mentioned some of them, but I, I don't remember which ones they were. But the idea, for example, the idea is if I wanted to um, do trad fest in January, right. then I would stay where the heart of the action is. I would uh, be given the names and buy tickets for the pubs where the big... Uh, traditional um, stars might be. I might be given some information in museums about, you know, the history of the fiddle in Ireland, and um, um, I might be introduced to people who um, can talk about 
traditional music in Ireland. Like what you mean is I taste, see, hear, visit, walk. Um, what you mean is all of me is involved in that experience. Is that what you mean by immersive experience? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jocelyn, um, for uh, giving us an introduction to Ireland. Um, I'm going to call on Manny now, who's going to talk about a couple of featured tours um, in Ireland. We have lots of other tours, but these are just some examples of things you can do in Ireland. Um, and if anyone wants any more, has specific questions, looking for specific experiences, they can just uh, give us a call or drop us a line. Um, so I'm going to pass it along to Manny. Um, I seem to have lost Manny. Okay, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay? Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, for uh, attending. Appreciate it, certainly. I appreciate uh, Jocelyn Black's uh, uh, being with us and being able to give a very quick uh, summary of, of um, Ireland. I just want to add that the, one of the things that's really, really great about Ireland is the friendliness of the people. I mean, uh, drop into any of the many pubs in, in the, uh, that every little town has at least one. And uh, they're always so happy to see you and greet you and, and to try all sorts of wonderful things. And the foods are just incredible. They're really, really fresh and uh, incredible. That's what, it, that's what it's all about. Uh, whether it's the thatched roof um, uh, pub, which is, uh, goes back to the 1400s or whatever uh, you're doing. Uh, the history and the way that the country evolved uh, with all the invaders along the coast, whether it was uh, the Vikings way back when, have all left their, their mark in the, in the country itself. And then, of course, the difficulty the uh, Irish have had over the, the centuries between uh, the potato uh, um, famine and, and other aspects, which created all the, the people um, emigrating to North America for a better life. So it's all, all part and parcel of what uh, people go back to see. So this, this um, slide that's up now, um, basically, um, it's about an eight-day, seven-night self-guided tour. It's with an electric bike. You can have a regular bike as well, but uh, it's an e-bike because some of the uh, the ones are are, um, are how should put it a little more difficult. So you might as well have slow, as it says, strenuous uphills, um, and but it's relatively flat. Um, and um, oops, thanks. Um, and uh, it's especially designed to visit the most beautiful spots in Camara. Uh, as you, you say, when you're there, when you're riding your electric bike, good thing to stop, easy to find your way around. Uh, this is eight days and seven nights. It's self-guided. It goes any day from daily from the beginning of April to into October. So it's really a, a good long season and the seasons change. And of course, um, because the distances are easy to do and you can easily check them out on our website. Um, and it makes uh, for, for um, a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to see the, uh, the countryside and see that part of the country. And uh, next I'm speaking about a hiking tour on the, the uh, Chiawain Peninsula. So that, as you say, it says it's eight days and seven nights, again, self-guided. Again, it goes roughly from April the 3rd to September 26th, very long season. It's, uh, you get great directions, easy to follow your way through. It's uh, discovering a, a breathtaking beauty, as you can see by the picture, of the uh, magnificent stretch of the coastline from fish, fishing villages. Uh, heritage towns uh, stand on remote rocky outdrops and take in the magnificent views of the Atlantic Ocean. So this is obviously on the west coast and uh, you can see the soft sands and they're quite quite remarkable and um, the fresh sea, sea salty air is always wonderful. It's a special feel. So this is 
a great way to, to experience it as you're hiking along. Besides all the animals, the lambs, it's, uh, that's another thing that you'll see all over um, Ireland is lots of lambs, Un unbelievable. So it takes in some of the most beautiful corners of uh, hidden corners of Ireland. It's, uh, it's as I say again, it, it goes every day. And uh, good backup, good support. The last little uh, one we're, we're mentioning here or following up on, uh, which is on, these are all on our website, by the way, is the um, Dublin to Wickwall bicycle tour. Dublin, obviously the main city, easy, easy to fly into. That's where the, all the major airlines fly in from Canada. Um, and um, it, the best feature is the coast, and this takes you uh, along the southeast coastline. Again, because it's an island, that's why it's, it's, it's Emerald Isle, is because it's all green. It's incredibly green. And uh, it's, it's got this rich, rich history, which you'll find, about, find out about when you're there. And self-guided, they give you lots of details, so it's easy to sort of learn where you're seeing and what you're looking at. And, um, and also appreciate um, the, the background of the history. And um, you spend two nights, um, I see in, in Larung, located beside the, mon the monastic village of Glenado, with its ruined abbey and district of uh, round towers, which you're seeing in the picture. Um, and, um, you know, head over the mountains and it's just an, an incredible, Opportunity to visit a lot of the uh, of the, um, of, the of the countryside, or a good part, of some some of the countryside, but also Dublin, which is an incredible city to visit. It's the largest city in in, in Ireland, and um, so that's basically the slides that we have. I just want to mention that we offer uh, we also offer, by the way, um, all sorts of tours, whether it's bus or whether it's self drive or, or, um, or um, um, sometimes uh, you can get guided and uh, it's always, always a wonderful thing to do. Our next webinar next month, by the way, is Denmark, which will be the, um, which is also a very interesting uh, a country to visit uh, with a number of islands. Um, so hopefully you'll join us next month, but thank you very, very much. Uh, Judy, for setting all this up and for running it through, and Jocelyn, a huge thank you to you. Thank you.